So I'm Narendra Hebba. Uh, like uh, I started my coffee journey since from 1993. So I was a uh, uh, like I was procuring coffee for a few MNCs, and I was a vendor for a few uh, domestic uh, coffee roasters. Uh, I'm talking uh, since from 1993. So 2012 onwards, I started uh, roasting and uh, doing a sort of research because I'm not a trained person or I'm not a certified person. So like I'm still learning, there are things, a lot of things to learn. So like recently, like uh, even I had participated in the National Barista Championship also just for an experience. So it was a great experience. So what, wherever uh, some event which is happening uh, related to coffee, I make a point to attend those uh, shows or whatever exhibitions where I can learn so many things. And we should know what's happening uh, outside, maybe outside India or whatever, how the things are changing, how the generation is changing, so in what way we have to target. So uh, based on that, I'm working on coffee now. So you, can you tell about your brand like uh, the 1864? 1854. 1854, I'm sorry, yeah, 1854. Could you say about that again? Yeah, see, when you speak about coffee, if you Google, Google it, the first story you hear is from Babu Budangiri, Saven Bean. It's a nice story, it's a true story, it's a fact. But Kurd has not been highlighted anywhere. So whenever I speak about 1854, even the locals, even the planters, they ask, what is this 1854? Yeah, exactly. I, I then I say, the yeah. year where uh, Kurd, the first coffee plantation started. Oh, is it? Yeah, is it? It's a surprise for that. So I am giving a message to the locals and to the people like who loves coffee and who like... Uh, the tourists, the travellers, all these people, you are, said, you are giving a message. So my brand, whatever I speak, 1854, the coffee story starts from there. So then maybe I have few estates where we have 6th generation, 5th generation, 7th generation. It's all old, uh, known plantations once upon a time. So I want to brand those coffees. Because small holders, what happens is once you go for a new plantation, now, because of the climate change, everybody is shifting to the new uh, imported varieties of coffee plants, the okay. seeds. The seeds. They started uh, importing it from Brazil. So, you have a coffee called as uh, Brazilian Katwai, mm. uh, this Katimur, all these new variants. Also, Vietnamese. Vietnamese the Robusta has come down now. Yeah. Yeah. We have dark variety Robusta now, which is commonly found in Ku. That is all from Vietnam. You taste this. This is Monsoon yeah. Malabar Cold Brew. It is, this is 24 hours refrigerated coffee. Oh, when, it's a cold brew. Yeah. Uh, when we brew the coffee, like we use the room temperature water for this. Wow. So there is no need of like steaming the water. So I, I generally don't drink it until I actually feel it. I smell the coffee first. I yeah, feel that is the it. way. That is the way you have to. Amazing this is. It's so relaxing. Mm. It has got nice acidity. This is Mansur Malabar. Yeah. See, yeah. The, the, this is like, I think, uh, this is the, that one is Mansur Malabar. It's a like light roasted coffee. See, this this is unwashed Arabica, where uh, they sent it to Mangalore. Earlier it was in Kerala. This process was done at Kerala because of the labor problem, all these issues. They got shifted to Mangalore now. Okay. So they have huge go-downs where they like uh, spread the coffee on the floor about 8 inches hmm. and they allow the coffee to absorb moisture from the sea. Oh. The, the Gordon doesn't have any doors, nothing. So openly it will absorb the, uh, this thing moisture and whatever the unwanted things are there in the coffee, unwanted characters, those characters are removed. So you get the authentic monsoon malabar flavor. So the only thing is it won't be having density. It won't be having density. Uh, because of this process, it will lose its density. So while you roast, you, should, you have to be very, very careful. Because you should go for a light roast. Dark roast, small temperature, one or two degrees, that side and this side, gone. It will collapse the it coffee. It will collapse. Stage, the yeah. coffee will start spilling oil. Absolutely. This is a major problem. Right now, it's very light yeah. and very aromatic. Yeah. I believe this is the same that uh, Priya, uh, like, you are coming from here. I think she tried one or two coffees, even I forgot which yeah, coffee she a, had. It was in a paper pouch just like that. But okay. it was more of that blue color. Like that ah, that is Mansur Malabar. Yeah, the that same is Mansur one. Malabar, exactly. Mansur Malabar. It's amazing. 
I am actually loving every bit of it. I can I can express. See, only thing is now the challenge is see we we have a lot of coffees we create blends, but we should know in what form you will get a better taste because equipments. Equipments and also the soil. Yeah. The growth. Yeah. That see, that, that 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 is the primary thing. See, when we select the coffee, what we do is we go and visit the plantation. We see what sort of a strain of arabica they have. The first thing. Second thing is we we just check what what sort of indigenous trees they have, because based on that we can imagine you you are going to get some sort of a flavor out of the coffee. If you have more of jackfruit, more of wild fig, and more of citric, if you have more of citric plants in your plantation, you hundred percent you are going to get that citric uh, flavor. Yeah, out of the citric coffee. flavor. So like only the, thing is you have to uh, Kenya Kenya yeah, kind of a flavor. Yeah. So Kenya, only thing basically. is you have to be in front of the roaster while it is getting roasted. Ha. So like you have to sniff it. Ah, you, you have exactly. to imagine. You have to check the temperature. Yes. So in what temperature it is getting roasted? Why we got that aroma? Yep. Based on that, we have to create a profile. Then we do the programming. In that way, we work. The first thing is that now the major uh, change in the coffee industry is in the plantation itself. There is a process. They wash. You can see this is washed. This is unwashed. Uh, Manchu. Manchu. Yeah. This is washed coffee. This, this is, is washed, washed arabica. Coffee. Was this is washed arabica. arabicas. This is unwashed arabicas. So, like, uh, while they do this particular process, now, like, they allow the coffee to get fermented for 16 hours, 24 hours. Okay, for the licorice, again, licorice taste. Yeah. Then again, again, it will get rewashed next day. Okay. Okay. So that is the way. And this is like the fruit where it get dried under the sun. It's very common uh, sort of a coffee where, where we call it as cherry. Okay, so Mansoon Malabar, Mansoon Malabar is, is unwashed Arabica. Unwashed Arabica. Arabica, Arabica. Unwashed Arabica with this particular grade called double A and A. Double A and, and A. A. With a with a straight cut. Yeah, so this is this straight. size is about 7.2 mm. Yeah. We have coffee up to 7.5 mm. That is triple A. We call it triple A. Okay. Triple A, double A, A. These three grades it will go to go for monsooning. So this is this is about unwashed unwashed coffees. So once you do the post harvesting, there are a few parameters now. Hmm. See, there are a lot of things to do. Like, you should dry it in a raisin raised bed. You are not supposed to like spread it on the floor. Okay. So there is no any control. Huh. So then you are supposed to cover the coffee somewhere around when the sun is very harsh, maybe about somewhere around from 12 to 3. So you need to control the temperature also ah, exactly. in which after it dries. The, uh, after, after checking the humidity. So you should have yes. a small humidity meter. You should check the humidity. Humidity based on that, you allow the coffee to dry or whatever you want. If you want, if the humidity is high, you just cover the coffee. You just protect the coffee from the sun for that particular three or two or three hours. Okay. Yes. So then after that, it will go for storage. Storage is very, very, very important. Storage. What happens? Storage is, temperature as well. No, no. Temperature is a major thing. Second thing is you are not supposed to store anything else where you store coffee. Not even pepper. Not even cardamom. Not even petrol, whatever the material, because immediately it will absorb uh, the environment. Uh, yeah. this thing. and and re if it is citrus, the acidity will be raised. Yeah, yeah, there a lot of lot of things might happen. Yeah, we don't know how we how it might react. So these are all the few things. Like uh, earlier, we used to pack it in jute bags. Now we have like all imported bags where we store the grains. Like we have one uh, brand called Grain Pro. Hmm. Uh, one is called as Ecotact. So all these bags are very good. Where we store the coffee in that and we should have a wooden pallet. Yes. So on the top of the wooden pallet we store. Then we do the roasting profile for that. So in the initial stages, maybe because coffee will be very fresh, it might give a nice taste. So if you want to maintain the same consistency, you should keep on watching what's happening to your coffee. Right. See like in the monsoon it might lose the density. Hmm, hmm. I'm sorry, in the, in the summer. Okay, in the yeah. monsoon, it might gain the density. Nobody knows. Because of the humidity absorption. Yeah, so, like humidity, like once it starts, even after uh, having such a good package also, even uh, because of the climate, it might lose the density. Then you have to change the profile again. So, these are all the major So, the temperature in, on which you roast it will change. Yeah. That, see, if you want to get that particular taste and consistency. See, one or two uh, degrees, that, uh, that said and this said, or else if the coffee changes its behavior. So you have to change accordingly. Otherwise, you won't uh, get the same consistency. You will lose the consistency. This is cement. Mm. The smell, like. Amazing. So. The aroma. Yeah, yes. the aroma. 
so these are all the few factors it's really important and then we do the programming but again the programming it will keep on changing then so what is the programming so in, the, in, the, in, the, in the in the in the roster itself okay roster or okay, whatever yeah. the profile we do we can program it and we can save it and keep okay okay but these are all the few challenges where you have to keep on keep on like so watching you the first process you know, a small uh, amount to see what profiling you have to do no, initial to stages then, initial stages we do but this in the same uh, profile won't continue for a long yes, time yes, based yes. on the season then again you have to do the profile again you have to change again you right. have to change the profile so yeah. all these uh, things so okay. this is like season factors uh, season lot. factors so you should be like uh, very familiar with the how the nature reacts how the climate change it will affect mm -hmm. all these things then comes your roasting okay yes. so once you fix the roasting then again, again comes you come for brewing so brewing you can do whatever you like Yes. What is you the ideal brewing time? Uh, no, no, no. It's not uh, like uh, creating a blend. Okay. Creating yeah. Blend. Whatever the thing you like, you can do. You can keep on testing. You can keep on experimenting on customers or people who are very particular, very well known about coffees. We, you can. It's very easy to get the feedback. So I really work on the feedback. Yep. So once you get the feedback, because few coffees it might taste better for me, but nobody knows how it how it might taste better for them. Yes, this is a big challenge. So right. satisfying your mass is very tough. See, so satisfying uh, like a uh, non-drinker, maybe he might be a tea drinker. Converting him into a coffee drinker, again the challenge is the common coffee drinker to satisfy him, and the younger generation like you. So you expect something else. So we have to take care of you also. Because see, the taste is subjective to yeah, everyone. Everyone. So, like, it depends on the generation. So, I can't say the same thing uh, like uh, I serve coffee without chicory with the uh, who, who cross fifty. Yes. Because their mindset is like that. Few yes. people they ask without chicory, how can you prepare coffee? How can you make coffee? <laughs> how can? What answer I can tell? <laughs> so, these are all the few things. Thank really, you. it it has like uh, made me like uh, to take it as a challenge. And second thing, I have like after opening this cafe, I have tried all sort of experiments on my customers, and have taken the feedback. And most of the people, like people initially, they asked why the mug size is so big, why the coffee is not very hot, mm -hmm. why the coffee is looks very sweet without sugar also. Mm -hmm. It's because of chicory, without chicory. That's all. Yeah. See, so if you say that this coffee is without chicory, his mind won't accept. Yeah. Then he'll be, he'll be, yeah, he'll be thinking, thinking in a negative way. Yeah. So better you you disclose all these things once he has coffee. Yes, I mean I have seen uh, people drinking coffee really, really hot, like boiling, boiling hot. But I have always drunk coffee to the taste because I want to actually taste it. I don't want to burn my tongue. Ah, you know? exactly. See, it will. One thing is it will damage your uh, palate, your lip. Then after that, there is no taste. There is no taste. And whatever the coffee, like if you want to really enjoy it, uh, really enjoy it, it, it has to be somewhere around between 90 degrees. Okay. It shouldn't be 95, 92, 93. See, so while we brew, we fix it on 92, 93. Yeah. So today we were just checking some coffees today. So we tried with 93 degrees, 92 degrees, 90 degrees, 88 degrees. You won't believe. 80 degrees also we brew. That specialty coffee, it was excellent in 80 degrees. You won't believe. 80 degree brewing, I mean, people say it's uh, it's not a coffee. It's not a, a coffee cold. at all. But if you want to really enjoy that, whatever it has, like the aroma, flavor, that uniformity, all these things, if you want to like know, huh. you should have in that form. Absolutely. Absolutely. So now we are working with the civet, see what taste so, you are going to get in different, different equipment. While, while civet, yeah. uh, is it allowed like I, I didn't know like is it legal to get a wild civet coffee because people do keep no, civet no. as here, here it is like uh, it is not uh, cased okay first of all it is not cased because of the rich uh, yeah rich uh, our western guards are very, are very rich because mm -hmm. of the flora and fauna and civets are there so the habitat yeah so it is there already it is there mm -hmm. so only thing is uh, people like here just to protect their crop mm -hmm. they kill like the way they hunt wild boar, the same way they hunt a civet also. Yeah, I so mean, civet is like they say the meat is very, uh, it's a very, very delicious. Okay. Okay, so it's very common here. So every like you can see like uh, 
one or two articles in a month, the official ones where it, it will be there, the article will be there in the newspaper, where uh, they are caught red yeah. and yeah. Uh, so the forest officials are very strict now. <laughs> it's not like earlier. It's not so easy. Hmm. So like the reason they used to give like they will eat our coffee. See, okay, once you yeah. pay huh. a good price, attractive price, hundred percent. At least people who who are little bit aware of all these things, at least they'll stop killing. Yes, yes, absolutely. So you are doing conservation. Yeah. It is not only like a commercial sort of a thing. I am not talking. It is hundred percent conservation only. The best fruit pick up करती है और वो ripe होता है अंदर. हाँ. पेट दो उसके और उसके बाद पूर्त में नहीं करता. That's why we drank right. So this is a civet coffee. Like which is commonly found in uh, Cook and even in a uh, few part of Chikmagalur. So where it will select the best fruit out of the branch, and the di the digestion happens. Maybe because of this, maybe the acidic reaction, reaction, all these, maybe because of those process, like it will lose its body. The coffee will lose its body. First thing. The second thing is it will give very earthy notes, and. Uh, Like ma major coffees you procure is robusta, but uh, this year onwards I even I started getting arabica and robusta mix, and I have small quantity of arabica also. So mainly people like uh, they used to kill this particular uh, animal because they used to think that they, it is damaging their crop because it was eating their crop, but nobody was buying in India. So I was the first person to start in 2014. So where. Uh, when i uh, like approach the market so everybody spoke about europe gulf yeah so where to reach what copy yeah. lowak so where to reach but when i heard the practice whatever they had it in indonesia yes so there was cruelty it is like uh, caged for forcibly fed and, uh, forcibly are, fed yeah but, yeah uh, so so basically then it's not the civet cat choice it's your choice uh, your choice here you are leaving the civet to eat Yes. Yes. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. So it will it will do whichever. So you it, get a wonderful coffee. Yeah, wonderful coffee. Yeah. So okay. <laughs> yeah, that is the difference, as you yeah, told. Absolutely. So, so then uh, like uh, when I started this, like everybody spoke about all international market only. Then I thought, bloody, we are hundred and thirty crores. That time I'm talking. Why can't you serve in the, it in India? It's not a big absolutely. thing. Exactly. We have people here. Because Only thing is, we have that sort of. I I tell you, people treat food differently. Here. Yeah. See what yeah, whatever the thing, whatever the produce we do, wherever in India, always the best ones we want to we want to export it. Yeah. We don't want to we use for ourselves. That is our major uh, setback. Yes, absolutely. And I am so happy to be here that I can taste the best of the coffees which are grown in India. Local, yes. I'm yes. like. Proud, very proud. Very so proud. So this is uh, so. Then again, they kill the animal. So that is, that is a common practice in Cook. Hmm. So now, when we started buying these coffees, at least there is some control, and people like they got that awareness, saying that if you are you are doing conservation also, along with the you are yeah. going to get a good price, and it's like you are doing conservation. So like conservation really adds a value for this. And if you like uh, in if you take the world market, it is very expensive. But in India, it's very affordable. Suppose in case if you compare to Jamaic uh, Blue Mountain Jamaican coffee, it's very expensive. It's cheaper than uh, Jamaican uh, Blue Mountain coffee. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> And I have seen people like villagers; they've changed their mindset. It's not like earlier. Yeah. They have changed their mindset now. They say like, so "Oh, I'm, you're, you're I'm paying that sort of a price. Here. This is uh, definitely we are going uh, to conserve coffee." It's a very good uh, response from them. Right, that sounds good. Yeah, so I did add value. Oh my God! If you're into conservation, very amazing. Yeah, very uh, very nice sir, coffee. Sir, I was also curious. Love apart it. from coffee, I love it. I love it. Hospitality, of course. What other interests uh, do you have, like apart from these four? I'm a little bit foodie. Yeah, yes. we both are a great eater of food. Yeah. Yeah. Any more things you like? You like cooking? Cooking, cooking yeah, cooking. I really love. Traveling, I love. Photography, I love. <laughs> But I'm not into photography now. Okay, okay. I gave it off maybe about ten years back. Okay. When I came to know, it's like expensive, and I'm not able to afford because I was uh, working with uh, coffee that time itself. So if I focus on that, I'll be losing this. This is for my survival. Plus, I'm very passionate about coffee. That is a major uh, advantage I have.